Welcome to the Council of Better Business Bureau's podcast, Better Business, Better Series, where we will explore top of mind topics with business and industry leaders to understand the leading trends and innovations that continue to push the envelope in today's marketplace. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. We spend a lot of time talking to business and thought leaders about what makes a great business great. And not just what makes businesses succeed, but what makes someone succeed in business. On today's show, we're going to hear from some of our inspiring guests and some of their thoughts about building a business that matters, that does well and drives passion among leaders and employees. Again and again, the themes we hear about are customer focus, being genuine, finding passion, and doing service for others. Molly Fonepadith is CEO of the SOAR Community Network. She's had a lot of experience helping leaders take a close look at themselves and their role as a leader. When you have what we consider thought leaders in the picture, and they really have to be open-minded and thought leaders, they have to care about this, uh, those are the ones who truly um, are open to experiencing things like team building, um, bringing someone outside to come in and share their vulnerabilities. What I've learned doing these types of workshops um, and leadership development programs that it really comes down to uh, to individuals not feeling valued, special, and heard. Molly's work focuses on so-called soft skills and areas that might not be as familiar to business leaders. A lot of these skills stem from allowing team members to speak up and talk about what they care about and are good at doing. We're all about messaging from your heart, because if you can create a sense of connection that is real, that is raw, that is authentic, you have a level playing field because you come there as human beings and not titles. You come there with your gifts and talents put on the table so that your leaders can really shuffle and make the best of your talents your skill sets, your experiences. I don't think leadership teams do that enough. I mean, how often do you go to meetings and maybe, you know, even once a week, you're three or four times in meetings and meetings and meetings that you never actually allow your team to explore or share what they're really gifted at. It's more about dictating numbers and quotas. So I suggest with leadership teams, even if you're small and you have a leadership team of two or three, or maybe you're the you're the uh, two co-founders, um, once a month at least, take a break, even if it's a half day or a happy hour, and do something that's not quota-driven, business-driven, profit-driven, and more about exploring creativity. What is it that you can do? How can you think outside the box? Because when you share like that, you actually get a lot more um, interesting, interesting concepts that come to you because you're not so stressed out about what you have to do to, to make profit happen. Being part of a team, connecting with leadership, feeling valued. Those are themes we hear a lot about. And Nina Bradley Clark is someone who knows a lot about all of those ideas. Nina is an Emmy-winning journalist who left TV news back in 2008. She's now a managing director for Beauty Counter, a leader in the personal care industry devoted to making safer, healthier products. She finds inspiration not just working on a brand dedicated to health and safety, but working with a team of over 200 women from all walks of life. So I think what has been really rewarding is how inspired I've been from doing this job with working with other women and helping them achieve their goals. And just, you know, having that team effort together, it's so inspirational and it's really filled me up. And I didn't really realize that I was missing that in my life. You know, I always knew that I was going to continue being a working woman, even after I had children. But I didn't realize that maybe what I was missing was really feeling inspired and empowered. But it really has filled me up in so many different ways. And it's just been so rewarding on so many levels. But Who doesn't want to feel more inspired, right? For Nina, the most important leap she took was committing to a new path and going for it. From there, she's grown as an entrepreneur and a leader. My best advice is to really take the job. If someone offers you an opportunity, you know, such as the one with Beauty Counter or something similar, I would take the job because you know what? When someone, you know, especially with Beauty Counter, the fact that we can go to work every single day and um, be financially rewarded for doing this job, which is really to push our social mission forward. You know, some people say that they would be a part of our social mission, even if it, even if it didn't pay them, that people say they might want to do it as a volunteer job. But the fact that we get financially rewarded while also having this, you know, significant impact as part of a social mission, I think that is such an amazing opportunity. And those opportunities don't come along 
very often. You know, some people say this is a once in a lifetime opportunity, and I truly believe that it is because being part of a social mission really does it it makes it makes a huge difference. And to be part of something that is so positive right now, I feel like that is where, you know, people want people want to be a part of that. Nina and Molly both stress how vital it is to find that work-life balance. Here's Molly again. Work is very personal uh, because if you're not happy at home, when you come to work, you're already stressed before your day starts and vice versa. If you're stressed out to the max at work, even at the highest leadership level, when you go home, you have no energy to give to your family, to give your children, to even give to your friends. And that really takes away something from the soul. So you can't lead with heart. You can't lead with vision. You can't be innovative when you're exhausted or when you're angry because you don't felt you don't feel heard, seen, or valued. Nina stresses that balance, especially for a working parent, is certainly not always there. And she has to remember that it's never going to be perfect. Well, I think in terms of what's the most challenging, you know, I'm not alone in this as a mother of two small children and, you know, running my own business um, and doing, you know, I juggle a lot. And I think that we all, as moms, um, working moms, we struggle with the balance. And I think that is really challenging for many of us. And it's not easy. And I say to myself constantly, you know, I want to have it all. But I realize that that can be a huge challenge. And I just, I really just try every day to do the best job I can be. I want to be the best leader at Beauty Counter, but I want to also be the best mom. But some days you can't be the best at everything. So I have to cut myself a little slack. But I think that's definitely the most challenging. Joanna Croats is a national magazine editor, journalist, author, and online small business columnist. She's interviewed hundreds of entrepreneurs over the years and has a unique perspective on how women can truly impact the success of a business and build that balance into their lives. I think it's a combination of everything. I think um, flexibility is the, is the key word to talk about. I'd rather um, make maybe 5000 to 10000 less a year and have time with my kids. And in terms of entrepreneurship, women would just rather have what I call Goldilocks businesses, just right size. I can manage it. I have a good income, but I'm not going to become Mark Zuckerberg. And by the way, 85% of women startups never have employees. I mean, it's shocking to me. And there's something about that that means it's a lifestyle choice, not just, and a lack of access to funding, of course. But it's just, I'm not necessarily interested in conquering the world. I'm interested in having a balanced life. And women will tend to go to Machu Picchu as well as have a business. Funders think if a woman is not dedicated to giving up her whole life to the business, she can't actually be really good at it. And we're missing that sense of, um, I guess, wholesomeness. And you take breaks and you have a different kind of, business, which means your employees are happier. So how does all this equate to a business succeeding and growing profit? It may seem obvious, but someone who is fulfilled, happy, and feels heard is going to make your business stronger. When you look at the number and how much money you lose and spend on, you know, in terms of talent, people don't necessarily leave because of money. They leave because of management. They leave because they're not feeling like they're contributing and all this inside of them, you know, all their gifts and talents are just being wasted. What happens to a person when that happens? They feel like their soul is dying. Have you ever followed somebody, whether it's in your career or whether it's just a mentor, wherever they go, you want to be close to them. You want to be near them. Yeah, Why sure. is that? Yeah. That happens when there is a personal connection, when you feel at a heart level. We talk a lot about this, and I'm one of those people who don't want to just talk about business because I think that if you you can have a heart connection at work. You have loyalty that you cannot buy. You have, you know, uh, the, the turnover rate. It just becomes minuscule now because nobody wants to, to, to leave when they feel so invested and they're a part of a team and a part of a true mission. Gabrielle and Brian Boucher run a business called The Millennial Solution and are best-selling authors on Amazon. Their focus is on understanding millennials in the workplace and helping businesses recruit and retain millennials. Here's Brian. Millennials are motivated by mission first, money second. They're still motivated by money, but they're motivated by mission first. So if they don't feel as if their personal significance is being applied in the workplace, that, they have, that they've gone deeper than just their skills, no wonder they're leaving in six months right. or 12 or 13 or 
two to three years when they had intended, intended when they started in the onboarding process, to stay as many as five years. Gabrielle points out the success of brands that are mission focused and attractive to millennials. Whether it's buying or, or, or working for, millennials are wanting to be a part of something larger than themselves. There's this community component of it, which we see all the time. Millennials are willing to support causes that give back. Uh, brands like Tom Shoes or Warby Parker have really exploded in the millennial market because there's this buy one, give one type of, of, of effect. And millennials are wanting to see that at work. No longer can companies say, well, we give X amount at the end of every year for the tax write-off. Millennials actually want to be a part of that process. And many in the workforce can look at that as seeing, you know, millennials are needy or they or they, they uh, want to get more involved than maybe they should. But what we see it as is millennials are really incredibly ambitious. And the more that companies can tap into that ambition and they can craft a uh, quality, exciting and engaging opportunity for that millennial, the longer the millennial is going to work there and the more value they're, they're going to bring to the bottom line. Molly sees the same mission-focused drive for millennials in her work and research. I believe that with the younger generation like the millennials today, I think they long for that. They long for the sense of, I want to feel like people care. I want to do things where, I don't know, once a month we go do something in the community. But when I come to work, I want to feel like I matter. So what's the first step to making sure you have people on your team who are engaged and finding purpose in what they do? It all starts in the hiring process. Rob Davis is CEO and president of the Better Business Bureau serving Southeast Florida. He thinks large brands can really learn from the success of small business. I think that's because they see them as more genuine. I can relate to them. They, I can talk to them. They can communicate to me. So I think the challenge for large businesses is to build that same type of perception in who you are. And I think when you think about those businesses that do this really well, those are the ones that give you that kind of small town feel. I feel they care about me, they know me, and they want to work with me. And if you look at the really great brands, if you look at the Zappos, or if you look at some of these businesses that just have that great customer service <laughs> mentality, they're committing and finding the right people. And then they're training those right people to have a consultation with the customer. And they're listening and they're sharing and they are collaborating to resolve a problem. And I think that's the difference between the people who are doing it okay, a robotic response, yes, we love you, we're sorry, versus those that are really building the kind of relationships that will turn that complaint into somebody who's going to be a brand ambassador for you. Rob also understands the power of customer service. There are many who subscribe to the convention that service is a business cost, but our data demonstrates that the superior service is an investment that can help drive business growth. Investing in quality talent and ensuring they have the skills, training, and tools that enable them to empathize and actually listen to customers who are central to providing consistently excellent service experience. Dallas Thomas begins every day thinking about being a brand ambassador. As director of customer advocacy at Southwest Airlines, he's focused on making real and genuine relationships with customers and finding team members who are driven to do the same. There's an internal saying at Southwest that they consider the business to be a customer service organization that just happens to fly airlines. The source of that is Colleen Barrett, who is our former president and now president emeritus. And if you know anything about the history of the company, Colleen is really behind the customer service culture at Southwest Airlines. Um, and I like to think about it this way. Um, you know, if for some reason we were to stop operating airplanes tomorrow, I mean, Boeing would be really unhappy. Um, <laughs> But And we entered into a non-transportation related business selling packaged goods or whatever. That customer service element um, would totally remain unchanged. Uh, we recognize really that customers are the lifeblood of what we do at Southwest Airlines. That's why we refer to them as customers and not passengers. It's a capital C customer. Um, and that's you know created a lot of great loyalty and relationships with our customer base over 44 uh, plus almost 45 years now. Um, but we actually remind each and every one of our employees that every two weeks when they get their paycheck, uh, there's a line on the, the direct deposit stub or their paycheck um, that lets them know that it's made possible by your um, Southwest Airlines customers. Really, that's one of the hallmarks when we go out and we hire a new leader off the street that's going to come in. 
is we want to make sure that they're going to be able to assimilate to the, the Southwest culture and the Southwest way of doing things. Whether you're running or launching a business, hiring the right people and keeping them on board and making sure you find fulfillment in your career. What is your mission? Perhaps easier said than done, but it doesn't have to be complicated. If you can tie everything to your personal vision and mission in life, everything flows. Money comes uh, or opportunities co comes. And my personal vision and mission in life is to help every single person sent to me see, own, articulate, and release, soar, okay. their unique message into the world, their unique light into the world. And I think that when you talk about social responsibility, if every single person that's sent to me cares about community and the world and we help them soar, then they actually get to create change. And that would be a benefit to all of us. And I think that if people really tap into what their unique gifts and talents are, their purposes, they have a direct contribution to making this world better. And our job is to help them message their mission to the world. To hear complete episodes with the business leaders in this podcast, be sure to subscribe to our Better Business, Better Series podcast at betterbusiness.blueberry.com. For the Better Business, Better Series podcast, I'm Will Johnson. You just enjoyed Better Business, Better Series podcast. Be sure to tune in next month for a brand new episode. To learn more about our other shows, visit betterbusiness.blueberry.com. That's betterbusiness.blubrry.com and subscribe. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the Better Business Bureau, Council of Better Business Bureaus, or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Blueberry's Terms of Service.